talking about is basic theoretical underpinnings of what's going on. Next slide, please. So my, I'll give you a brief uh, review. I'm going to concentrate on galactic cosmic rays in this talk because they're probably the most important uh, as far as the consequences are concerned. I'll give a brief review of current anomalous sunspot minimum. I don't need to do that, so I'll go through that quickly. We have had a lot of information on that. I'll talk about galactic cosmic rays. And I will try to summarize our current view of the basic physics and point out that uh, right now we are just beginning to see the cosmic ray increases that we expect. And so any detailed interpretation is probably premature at this stage. Uh, so I'll try and discuss how that might go and discuss some implications. Next slide. So what I'm going to talk about today is the, uh, the galactic cosmic rays, which are illustrated in this slide the uh, protons and helium. The dashed line is uh, an indication of transient solar particle events, which also play a role. These are, this is the cosmic ray intensity seen outside of the Earth's magnetosphere. And this entire turnover at low energies is what we call uh, solar modulation galactic cosmic rays caused by uh, the solar wind flowing out from the sun. Now this these galactic cosmic rays are the environment of the Earth, or significant part of the Earth's environment in space. And it's important to understand what it's likely to do in the future, particularly with respect to uh, man, man's exploration of space. This is a significant hazard to man in space. But also, we would like to understand how this change occurs so we can use proxy indicators of uh, cosmic rays in the past to try and see what the sun and climate was doing in the past. The uh, current sunspot minimum, my position is that it's a great opportunity for us, unless it really gets bad, uh, for us to study these phenomena in a new parameter regime and hopefully understand the whole process a lot better. Uh, next slide. So we're talking about the heliosphere. This is a uh, poor man's drawing. Uh, we have the sun, the solar wind flowing out, the magnetic field, and we have the outer parts of the heliosphere. And the idea is that the galactic cosmic rays come to us from the galaxy. They're pretty much impeded till they get to the uh, contact surface and possibly even inside of that. And mainly the solar wind inside in the inner parts of the heliosphere uh, tries to keep the cosmic rays out, but they leak in along the magnetic field and to some extent across the magnetic field. As Frank pointed out, the, uh, the current models are beginning to show us that there is almost certainly significant changes in the cosmic ray intensity between the uh, outside uh, interstellar medium and the termination shock, which is called the heliosheath. This is called the heliosheath. And we are, the models do show significant changes, changes there, and that's perhaps uh, uh, or as Frank was saying, that may be a big player in all that's happening. Next slide. So this is a, I just want to show you the complexity of this region. Please don't try to interpret it all. But we, this is another similar drawing to the previous simple one. We have here the contact surface. We have the solar wind flowing out. We have the termination shock. And we have the solar wind flowing beyond the termination shock being blown around behind. And we have the interstellar medium being Around. All this plays a role in what happens to galactic cosmic rays as they come into the heliosphere. The general feeling right now is probably it's good to keep the interstellar intensity, which we don't really know below a few hundred MeV, uh, equal to what it is throughout the galaxy into perhaps the, uh, this contact surface. However, it is certainly possible that the uh, transport in the interstellar medium locally is sufficiently impeded that we might actually have consequences for of the heliosphere even outside beyond the, uh, the bow shock or the, uh, the heliosheath. Uh, I'm not going to address that here. Next slide. The tool that we feel is certainly adequate to handle this is the Parker transport equation written down in the mid-60s by Gene Parker in a slightly different form, but the physics was all there. And the basic idea is that uh, the cosmic rays we see are essentially isotropic in pitch angle. They're coming in all directions. And this equation makes use of that to uh, derive a transport equation for the isotropic part of the distribution. 
places where the anisotropies are large, this is not the proper equation to use. But for galactic cosmic rays in particular, and indeed the anomalous cosmic rays, that's not an issue. So this is the equation we feel uh, behaves, uh, gives the behavior. Uh, this term here involving the divergence of the flow velocity contains all of the energy change. The electric field, the effects of the electric fields in the heliosphere changing the energy is all contained in this divergence of U uh, because in MHD the magnetic field and the uh, flow velocity deter determine the electric field. And added here are the drift velocities, which I'll discuss later. This is the gradient and curvature drifts. And I want to emphasize here, if I forget to do it later, that the major transport terms bringing the cosmic rays in are the diffusion. This is a random walk of the particles through the turbulent magnetic field and these gradient and curvature drifts. Both of those transport effects depend essentially on the inverse of the magnetic field. As the magnetic field gets weaker, the drift velocity and the diffusion become more rapid, so the cosmic rays have much more easy access. That's a big player in what we think is happening. And similarly, this is the solar wind convection velocity here. It's the radial flow of the solar wind. And that uh, also is, appears to be quite low. And that is the thing that also uh, that acts to impede the particles from coming in as well. So we have basically uh, two major effects. Well, there are three. If we look at it a different way, I'll show you that in a minute. But the drift velocities. The diffusion and coefficient, which depend both, uh, get bigger if the magnetic field gets weak, and the flow velocity of the solar wind. Next slide. So this is a cartoon illustrating these effects that come from the Parker equation. Uh, in this, uh, this, I would call this, I guess, an amber line. These are the drift velocities uh, for the uh, cosmic ray particles. They depend on the sign of the magnetic field. In this particular diagram here, the outer magnetic, the out, the northern uh, heliosphere magnetic field is outward from the sun. The southern hemisphere, the southern component is inward from the, inward toward the sun, and the drifts have this sign. They come in over both poles and they move outward along the current sheet. The, if we go to the next sunspot minimum, uh, the drifts are in the opposite direction. They come in along the current sheet, and this has been discussed by previous authors. This is based on solid physics. These are physically uh, very sound properties. The particles at the same time are meandering or wa random walk in and out of the heliosphere. Most of them come in for a while and go back out. Some make it in far to be seen. Okay, so, uh, I'm sorry. The, the other thing shown here is the outer boundary, which in all of the simulations that I'm going to talk about is taken to be a sphere corresponding roughly to the, uh, the, uh, the, um, boy, I've got a block here the heliopause, and we, we do carry our calculations out through the heliopause, but in this rather simplified geometry. The geometries are getting more complex as time goes on, and I, but I'm not going to discuss those in detail. I'm going to go into the basic physics here. Okay, so we're uh, solving the Parker equation in this quasi-spherical geometry, but it's clearly not spherical. We have this current sheet, we have the drift velocities, and we impose outside at this outer boundary the uh, presumed galactic cosmic ray intensity, which is assumed not to change in time. All the time variations come from changes in the solar wind. By the way, that's almost certainly a good approximation for any changes on less than about 10,000 years. Uh, next slide. So this is a slightly more complicated version of that figure. You've seen Rick Lesky showed this earlier. This shows for the opposite sign of the magnetic field from the previous one. This is where the uh, the, the, the designation is QA less than zero. That means the southern hemisphere magnetic field is out from the sun, corresponds to the present sunspot minimum. The particles come in along the current sheet and are ejected over the poles. Again, these are gradient and curvature drift motions, very well understood. And this is a diagram, three-dimensional projection of the current sheet showing the up and down wiggles, which are shown in projection here. And this whole uh, structure arises from the fact that the uh, dipole or the field which gives rise to this is, uh, has an axis which is inclined to the rotation axis of the sun. Above this current sheet, the magnetic field is a Parker spiral in one direction, and in the south, below the current sheet, there another sign. And if you're on a spacecraft that is sitting at a given point, as this structure rotates with the rotation of the sun, uh, you are alternately above and below the current sheet. If you're below uh, this, this angle. This is 
for reasons which I forget, called the tilt angle, although it's clearly not tilted. Uh, it is tilted right at the sun, but this is what I call the, the degree of waviness of the current sheet. So again, the particles come in along this and uh, are ejected over the poles at the present time. Yes, next slide. So we can solve Parker's transport equation. There are a number of very sophisticated solutions to this. This is one of the simpler ones. Uh, this was uh, just done a few years ago with a code that I own. Uh, I've shown the anomalous cosmic rays just for uh, contrast. The anomalous cosmic rays are accelerated, we think, in the vicinity or near or perhaps in the heliosheath, but they're not coming in from the galaxy. The galactic cosmic rays are coming in from the galaxy. There's a possibility of some increase near the heliospheric uh, termination shock because of a moderate acceleration they undergo there. But basically, uh, most of the time, you expect the... Uh, the cosmic rays to continue to increase beyond the termination shock. Pro pr prior to some 20 years ago, uh, people would carry this model only out to the termination shock, but now we know that considerable modulation occurs beyond, and Frank was emphasizing that in his talk earlier. Next slide. This is a little bit more uh, 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 detailed drawing of the same thing for one sign of the magnetic field here, and for the opposite sign, this is the current. And you can see that at uh, trying to see what this is, uh, boy, let's see, yeah, different energy particles uh, plotted uh, as a function of radius. Again, at the lower energies, there's clearly significant increase in the cosmic rays as we go from the termination shock to the boundary. Uh, next slide. Uh, observations on Voyager, uh, in some sense, confirmed what I'm talking about, in other senses did not. These are the anomalous cosmic rays, ignore the energies, there was a mislabeling of the slides. These are anomalous cosmic rays, which clearly were doing weird things in the outer heliosphere. We still don't fully understand this. This is a debate. But the galactic cosmic rays, if you take account of the fact that there are temporal changes occurring in the solar wind, this is not too far uh, of a dependence if you took it as the radial dependence, although it's just time. Uh, this is a combination of radial and uh, spatial dependence. There's no obvious difficulty with the galactic cosmic rays. Next slide. Uh, this is a, a classic uh, old, fa old cosmic ray modulation uh, calculation of neutron monitors. This is the observed climax neutron monitor for two successive sunspot minima. You see the alternation of the sharply peak and the more rounded peak. And this is a crude uh, model of the same thing where the only thing that was changed was the sign of the magnetic field and the tilt of the current sheet. And you can see that the... Uh, the intensity was a sharper maximum for current sunspot cycle, or current sign of the magnetic field, and more flat. And this was thought to be a reasonably good confirmation of the basic ideas. Next slide. So this is, again, a longer time period, climax neutron monitor. You can see this alternation, again, where with the magnetic field, uh, where the magnetic field changes sign every 11 years, where the magnetic field was positive in the outward from the sun in the northern hemisphere, we have uh, broader maxima in the cosmic rays and sharper maxima. And we're still waiting to see what happens. Unfortunately, new, uh, Climax was shut down uh, by the funding agency, and uh, I haven't updated this slide. Uh, next. So the general picture at this point seems to be working well. Increasingly sophisticated numerical simulations are, are, have appeared in the last decade. Uh, 3D, time-dependent heliosphere, uh, very, very sophisticated, including the evolution of the turbulent fluctuation causing the, the random walk or diffusion of the cosmic rays. Very sophisticated, uh, and basically there are enough knobs to tweak, although the basic phenomena that was uh, done years ago by simpler models is preserved. They are now have knobs for the turbulence and things like that, and they can uh, do self-consistent models, and there is very good agreement with the observations. Uh, these groups have begun to address the current solar minimum, but as I will point out, uh, we really have to wait a while before we can really make a definitive study of this. The question really remains, uh, in my mind, is whether these very, very sophisticated models based on the paradigm that I just discussed, whether that will continue to be adequate or whether we're going to have to have a paradigm shift. Uh, of course, we don't know yet. Next slide. So the current sunspot minimum, 
It's anomalous, as has been pointed out by many speakers today. It clearly has affected cosmic rays. And as I pointed out, we have an opportunity to increase our understanding by using this as, in a sense, a probe of different areas of, of parameter space. And this will then go back to help us understand how the environment of the Earth with respect to cosmic rays changed in the past in response. And if, once we understand, once we measure these changes using beryllium-10 or other proxy indicators, we can per perhaps understand better what the sun was doing back in those eras and help us to understand the Earth's climate and its variation. Next slide. So this is uh, a slide I didn't see today, but basically showing the uh, magnitude of the field in sunspots. Bill Livingston at NRO uh, printed this slide. I don't have to show most of these. Let's go quickly. So this is another measurement showing the magnetic field went down. Next slide. So what I have emphasized in, in this presentation is a low magnetic field strength and low wind velocity, although as has been pointed out uh, by previous speakers, the waviness or tilt of the current sheet is also a big player in this. So what I have done just, as, just to illustrate the point, what happens is that if the magnetic field or the solar wind velocity or the tilt of the current sheet changes near the sun, it takes a long time for that to get out to the outer heliosphere, which then, as the cosmic rays come in, it takes them a long time to come back in, uh, several months perhaps. And so what happens at the uh, sun doesn't change the cosmic ray intensity fully for more than a year. Next slide, please. OK. Oh, this is an illustration of what we're seeing. The cosmic rays are in increasing now in response to the lower magnetic field. But I don't think we've seen the whole thing yet. Next slide. Uh, this is another indication of the uh, beryllium-10 and the fact that we're continuing to go down. Next slide. So what I did was just, uh, this is the first of two slides. Uh, this is a, 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 something I did several years ago showing how changes in the magnetic field, just change, doing nothing more to the model, but changing the magnetic field strength. One is the current magnetic field. And these are at, at different energies showing the effect of changing the magnetic field on the cosmic ray intensity. And I think that's a large part of what's happened in the past. The, the magnetic field of the sun has just changed. I have not done the same calculation for the wind velocity, but it's expected to be the same. Next slide illustrates, let's see. First, I wanted to discuss the time scales. If you, you can just do a back of the envelope calculation, if you take the fact that diffusion, diffusive time scales are the length scale squared divided by the kappa, and just take this to be the radial diffusion coefficient. If this takes a few years if L is 100 AU. Time for change in solar wind parameters to propagate through the heliosphere is perhaps about a year. Hence, the effects of the anomalous sunspot minimum should perhaps last for perhaps a year or a few years, depending on what energy particle you're talking about and what diffusion coefficient. Next slide. This is just a simple calculation. Ignore the bump. That's just an initial transient. What I did here was uh, do a model with the current sign of the magnetic field and just change the magnetic field at the sun and let that propagate at 400 kilometers per second. This is just a step function decrease in the magnetic field. So we have initially a steady level uh, prior to this decrease, and the decrease propagates out. And you can see that it's taking at, at 200 MeV, it takes perhaps a year and a half or so to reach uh, nearly its maximum. And at lower energies, it takes more time. And so my guess is that we will still be pondering these things in a couple of years. But now is the time to start modeling it and see if we need uh, drastic changes in our models. Next slide. So conclusions. Present sunspot minimum is sufficiently abnormal that it tests our understanding of these cosmic ray modulation. We should seize this opportunity to increase our understanding of solar modulation by exploring previously not observed parameter ranges, and then understanding the sun and the history of the solar system better. Thank you. OK, do we have questions for Randy? Yes.
Yes, I, the, the comment was that uh, I should be aware that not only do we have to carry these changes out into the uh, to the boundaries of the, uh, to the termination shock, but beyond into the heliosheath, and some of these effects can uh, last for more than years, maybe a decade or so. That's true, but the major effects, I think, are in this model, Vladimir, because in this model, I do have a slow solar wind beyond the termination shock, and it slows down even more. Uh, I do have a wall similar to the one that you've proposed, and so I'm thinking maybe a few years, but but certainly some effects will be seen for longer. Okay. Well, do you have any final comments on the session? Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, taking part in this session. I know everybody wanted to get to dinner, yet we still have people here. Thank you very much for staying. And let's maybe come back in a year or two and do the same thing and see where we are at that time.